Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to talk about the drawbacks of using function call as template expression in Angular. So let's get started. Before I jump into discussing the drawbacks of using function call in Angular template, let's first go through the basics of expressions and change detection. What exactly are expressions? At a very high level, an expression is a valid unit of code that results to a value. For example, if I open one of the template file, we can see address skills, which are bound to data input. And these values are expressions. It's because these two properties in components results to some value. Likewise, if I go further down into another template file, we can see get skills property, which is being wrapped between these two curly braces. We call this as interpolated expression. And again, get skills property also results to some value. Similarly, if I open another template file, we can see get address function also results to some value. And again, this function is being wrapped within the two curly braces. So this function is interpolated expression. So now let's go through the basics of change detection. At a very high level, Angular walks through all of your components starting from the top to the bottom looking for changes and if it finds any changes on the state of those components those components will be re-rendered for example let me share one diagram here and then we can discuss further on this diagram i have represented the component tree structure of this application at the very top we have app component which represents the whole application and then we have profile component which represents this profile piece and this profile component has two side components which are address component and skills component respectively so as per the rule of change detection if there is any change on the app component which can happen because of browser events such as click events hover events and so on or because of some asynchronous operations such as promise set timeout and so on Angular has to go through all the components to look for changes and if there are any changes on the components it has to re-render those components. On this UI let's say you just clicked this hamburger menu and this hamburger menu is part of the app component. So when this button is clicked change detection cycle also kicks in and then it will go through all of these components. It will go through profile component, address component, and skill component, and check for the state. If the state have changed, then it will re-render, else it will not re-render. So now let me also walk you through the code. So on the profile component, I'm using two different components, address and skills. And on the skills component, I'm displaying some skills separated by comma. And also I have a slider which represents different value. On the address component, I have just one button and then I'm displaying the address. If you look closely here, I'm using function. On the skills, I'm not using function. This get skills is actually a getter function. So based on this structure, I want to demo something here. Let me undo the comment. Also on the address component, let me remove the comment. When I click on the very top component, let's check what will happen. I clicked on the hamburger menu, which is part of app component, which is here. We can see some data being logged. If you look closely here, we are getting this log data from address component and skills component let's go and see on the address component so we are seeing this log in address component it's because we are using this get address function as a template expression likewise if we go on the skills component we are getting this log it's because we are using get skills on the template also let's imagine i clicked on change theme input and this change theme is part of the profile component let me show that one more time so this is our profile component and change theme is coming from this input if i click here and then try to change the value 
we are again getting the same kind of log message. It again goes on the same address, skills, functions. Also, if I click on the edit address, it again goes on the skills component. Keep in mind that skills and address are sibling components and if there is any change on one of the sibling component, then the change detection process will also run on the other component. So in this case, when I click edit address, of course the change detection will run on the same component and as well as it ran on the skills component. Likewise, if I click on the skills component, it goes through the address component. And if I move the slider again, it goes through both of this component. Keep in mind that Angular uses unidirectional data flow model, which means change is propagated from top to bottom, not from bottom to top. So based on all of these scenarios, now let's imagine on this function right here, I have some time consuming task or some CPU intensive work. What will happen? This will really impact our performance, right? And also, let's imagine what if we have some time-consuming algorithm here. It might affect the performance of our whole application, right? Let me demo that time-consuming operation and then we can see the effect on the UI. Let me go over to another component which is called customers. And this component basically renders a list of users with ID and title. If we go and look on the customer space, we have table TR and we have basic loop here, nothing fancy. And also we have some sorting feature here. It's sourced based on the ID, that's it. And as of now, everything looks good. There is no problem at all. But now let's imagine that we have some CPU intensive work. I can simulate that by adding one function which I already created. I have a function called get security number on the component and this function basically has recursive calls. So this function will run 40 times here as shown on the code. Based on this function, if I call this function on the template as a expression, let's see what will happen. So when it loads for the first time, we know that it has to calculate this for all of the rows, right? Because this is within the TR. For each TR, we are executing this function. If I click on this button, what will happen? It has to re-render the same thing, right? Because whenever there is any event happening on the component, that component will be re-rendered. That's the principle of change direction in Angular. So meaning if I click here, then again, we are running this function. But now the question is, is it really required to run this function? No, it's because we are just rearranging the rows in either descending or ascending order. And it has nothing to do with the value that's displayed here. So each time I click here, we are always computing the same value. And this might really impact the performance of your application. And also you can see here, it is processing a lot of messages here, right? And imagine there is some scrolling function, which I have here as well. And when I scroll, it again has to go through all of the computation, right? Because the scroll is one of the event that will trigger the change detection. And whenever there is change detection, it has to go through all the components, including itself. And each time it has to reevaluate all of these expressions, right? Remember, expression has to result to some value. And unless this function is executed, we'll not know the value. So Angular has to reevaluate this function over again and again on each change detection cycle, right? You see? We are having some issues on the UI. If I click here, it's the same thing, right? Because change detection will kick in and then it has to check for changes on all the components. Let me show you one more thing. If we go on this debugging tool, which is very cool, 
we can profile the change detection cycle over here. So let me start this profiling process. And then now I can start the event. If you notice here, it's taking 2651.5 milliseconds. That's a lot of time. If I click again here, you got another one, and it again took about the same time. And if I scroll the page, we'll see a lot of change detection cycle. This is pretty expensive. So how can we fix this? Let me stop the profiling. Let me undo my code because this is creating some issues on the browser. There are two approaches to fix this problem. One approach is to use PurePy. So let me show that with example and then I can discuss further about it. So instead of using function call here, I can use Py. Let me come in this code out. Security number, which is used here is a pipe let me go through that pipe first if we look here i have now moved that logic over here which we used to have on the component and this pipe basically takes one argument which is the user id and then it just uses the same function here that's it and keep in mind pipe is by default pure so the advantage of using pipe is angular will only execute this pipe I mean this transform function only if the value has changed. So in our case, if this value has changed, then only the transform function of pipe will reevaluate. Let me save this file and then we can see that in action. So for the first time, of course, it has to go through that computation for each row, and we are seeing this from security number pipe, line number four. Now, if I scroll the page, I'm logging this scroll on the component, right? But we are not saying this log anymore, which means we are not triggering this function on each change detection cycle because nothing has changed at all. Likewise, if I click on the sorting feature, we are not saying this console log, right? It's because Pipe is smart enough to know that there has not been change at all, right? A pure pipe is a pipe that runs when a primitive JavaScript input value such as strings, numbers, booleans, symbols, or an object reference change. In our case, the parameter of this transform method is a number primitive. If we look on the customer's template file, we are sending number primitive as an argument to this pipe. And this function will only run when the value has actually changed. When you sort this customer's list, we are not changing the value. That's why this pipe doesn't run. If I simulate a scenario where I'm changing the value, then this pipe will run. And that's what I'm going to demo that quickly as well. Let me go over our customer's component file. And let's assume that when you sort the ID column, I'm going to change the ID of the third user of the user's array to some different value. Again, this is just to demo that we have changed the ID of one of the users of the user's array. Let me save this. Of course, for the first time, it has to go through the pipe. But if I click here to sort this list, it's again going through the pipe. Let me do that one more time. I click here. It went through this security number pipe and it triggered this function. So this proves that pure pipe only runs when the actual value had changed. Let me undo my code. And now this is working as expected. Let's also try to go through our profiling process if you recall, when you sort this column last time, the average change detection time was about 2500 milliseconds. But with the implementation of this pipe, there should be some good improvement on our change detection timings. Let me go over to our Angular profiler. Let me start the process. And I'm going to click on this ID. Now we can see the timings for each change detection cycle. 
and it just took 4.8 millisecond. That's a huge difference to 2500 millisecond, which we saw last time. Let me trigger some more events. This is a very good performance improvement, and we can clearly see the benefits of using pure pipes compared to calling functions directly on the templates. Now, we can use the same approach on our skills and address component. I have already created a pipe for our address component. This pipe is similar to our security number pipe. One difference is that on the transform method, now I'm passing the object rather than the primitive value such as number. So in this case, this address pipe will only run if the reference of the address has changed. First, let me go and implement this pipe and then we can talk about this further. Let me go on the address component. We are going to replace this method with the pipe. This data is object and I'm passing the same object to our address pipe. On our pipe, we are using the properties of this object separated by comma. Let me save the template. Let me go on the profile component. We can see that this is rendering the address correctly, like we saw earlier. And if you notice, we can see this message being logged, which is coming from the address pipe. Now, if I click here, we are not getting any log like we used to do before while using the function call on the Angular template. If I send some value on the parent component, this is again no longer logging the message. So that means our pipe is working as expected because when I change the value here, it's not changing the object of this component. Let me try to demo the change of the object reference by clicking on this refresh address button. So when I click on this button, our address should change. It changed to something else now. And the reason for that is if I go on the profile component and look on the refresh address event, which is bound to this button, I'm generating a new object reference. This object is different than our old object find here these two objects doesn't match so when we are sending a new object our pipe also knows that this parameter now has changed and i need to re-render one thing to keep in mind is that there is a difference between a brand new object versus mutating the object let me demo that quickly as well let's assume that i have modified the old object let me click the reference address nothing changed. It's because address pipe didn't see any changes. On the pipe, it just compares the reference of two objects using equality sign. In this case, since the address object has not changed, our pipe will not run and therefore will not see any new data on the UI. So make sure to use the new object reference if you are using pure pipe. And now we can use the similar approach for skills but I'm not going to implement that one because it will be similar to what we just did now. That's it. The second solution is to use the ng on changes lifecycle hook. So let me go and undo my code over here. So let me let me comment the code for the timing. Let me go on the address component and I'm referring to this ng on changes logic. This lifecycle hook is only executed if there has been some changes to the data input. So in our case, address component should only re-render if the actual value of address has changed. Otherwise, there is no need to re-render the address component. We can add that logic on this lifecycle hook. I need to create one more property which I can use on the address instead of the function call here. I'm going to use address over here. So this is no longer a pipe or function call. It's just a class property. This is still empty. Now here address equals. I'm going to call this function. I only need to execute this function when the actual value of data has changed. 
So if I save this one, we saw this one, right? And we saw this in the address component for the first time. But if I click here, I no longer see this message. That means we are not invoking this function. If I click on the skills, we no longer see this function getting executed. If I click on the app component, we no longer see this message getting locked. But if I click here, this refresh address, this will get triggered in address component. It's because if we look the logic on the profile component, when the user clicks the refresh address button, I'm generating a new input. So the previous reference of the input and this new reference will change because this is a brand new object. And therefore, on the address component, this changes will be true because now the data has changed, right? The value of data has changed. And therefore, we have to reassign a new value on the address property by executing this function, right? That's pretty much it. If you enjoy watching my video, please share and subscribe to my channel. That will help a lot to grow my channel. Thank you very much. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.